In this video, we're going to take a look at signings which broke the transfer fee record for Celtic at the time they were made. Number 1. John Collins Celtic's first ever million pound signing arrived from Hibs in the summer of 1990. Rangers attempted to hijack the transfer late on, but Collins had given his word to Celtic and joined Billy McNeil's squad. The years ahead would be dark times for Celtic, but alongside Paul McStay in midfield, John Collins was a ray of light as the club struggled on and off the field. He made 273 appearances in a six year spell at the club, scoring 55 goals. He'd later go on to be assistant manager to Ronnie Dyla from 2014 to 2016, with the likes of Virgil van Dijk crediting Collins for improving his game. Number 2. Tony Cascarino The Irish international joined a year after Collins for a fee of £1.1 million from Aston Villa. As popular and impressive as Collins' influence on the team was, the same cannot be said for Cascarino. The 6'2 target man managed just 4 goals in 30 appearances, with the most memorable being an equaliser at Ibrox. He also managed to both score his first goal for the club and get sent off after coming on as a sub in a game against Hearts. He fell out with manager Liam Brady, who had previously been Cascarino's agent before bringing him to the club, and in February 1992 moved to Chelsea in a deal which saw a swap for Tom Boyd moving in the opposite direction. Cascarino would later claim, Celtic played too much football to suit my style, though he does have happy memories of getting drunk and singing in a Chinese restaurant the night he scored against Rangers. Number 3. Stuart Slater Another disastrous signing, Slater arrived from West Ham for £1.5 million in the summer of 1992. The English winger came with a good reputation and had turned down West Ham's improved contract offer to move to Glasgow. He had skill and talent but was all too often invisible during games, with teammate Andy Payton stating that Slater was the type of player that couldn't handle pressure. A struggling Celtic side was not a fit for the Englishman and he left just over a year later for 750k to Ipswich after 56 appearances and 3 goals. Number 4. Phil O'Donnell One of Tommy Byrne's first signings as Celtic manager, O'Donnell arrived from Motherwell in the summer of 1994 for £1.75 million. The 22 year old was another player with a lot of potential upon arrival and had made his name in Motherwell's 1991 Scottish Cup triumph scoring their second goal in a memorable 4-3 victory over Dundee United in the final. O'Donnell's time at Celtic was consistently troubled by injury. He'd have a decent run of form, then be out for a longer spell with injury. He'd stay for five years, but never truly lived up to the promise he'd shown early in his career. In total, he made 121 appearances for the club, scoring 20 goals, and played a squad role in the team that won the league title in 1998 including a starting role in the final day 2-0 win over St Johnson that would seal the championship. Indeed, it would be O'Donnell who was substituted off for Harold Bratback, who would net the second goal to calm the nerves that day. He left the club in the summer of 1999 alongside friend and teammate Simon Donnelly, with both signing for Sheffield Wednesday. Tragically, O'Donnell would pass away aged just 35 after experiencing cardiac arrest while playing an SPL game for Motherwell. Though his playing career at Celtic was mixed, he is remembered fondly by the fans and missed by all who knew him. Number 5. Andreas Tom Celtic had money to spend in the summer of 1995 and were linked with a number of continental attackers to make a serious push for the title. Linked with David Ginola for weeks, the deal fell apart and the club turned their attention to German attacker Andy Tom. He joined from Bayer Leverkusen for a £2.2 million fee and arrived with great pedigree 29 years old, he'd managed 16 goals in 51 caps for East Germany and 2 goals in 10 caps for the unified German national side. He'd played at the World Cup, European Championships, won East German titles and the German Cup, but his spell at Parkhead was somewhat mixed overall. Tommy Burns initially paired him up top with Pierre van Hooydonk, but he was somewhat overshadowed by the Dutchman. He was a hard worker and a team player and would soon be played in a more withdrawn role behind the strikers to help create following the arrival of George Cadetti. After the dismal years of the early 90s, Tom was an important part of Celtic's mid-90s turnaround to begin challenging for titles again. His signing improved the standard at the club, with the German making 96 appearances in all competitions, scoring 24 goals, the most memorable being a thunderbolt strike in a 3-3 draw at Ibrox. He returned to Germany in January 1998, having made enough appearances for Celtic to earn a league winner's medal to go with the League Cup medal he'd won earlier in the season. 
Number six, Alan Stubbs. The English centre-back arrived from Bolton for a fee of £3.5 million in August 1996. Highly rated and sought after at the time, Stubbs rejected a move to Arsenal for the guarantee of first-team football at Parkhead. The signing seemed like a massive coup for Celtic on the surface, but Stubbs struggled in his first season and his future was in doubt at the end of the campaign. But his fortunes turned around following the arrival of Wim Janssen as manager, and more importantly, following the arrival of Danish centre-back Mark Reaper in the summer of 1997. The duo formed a formidable partnership at the back and were instrumental in Celtic going on to win the title. During those mid-90s years when Celtic kept coming up just short in their challenge of Rangers, Celtic were generally exciting and dynamic in attack, but vulnerable at the back, especially to conceding on the counter. Throughout the 97-98 campaign, the Stubbs-Reaper partnership helped shed that reputation. Stubbs would also score a crucial stoppage time equaliser for Celtic in November 97 against Rangers, a goal which would ultimately be all the difference between finishing first and second. Unfortunately, this campaign was the real peak of Stubbs' stay at Celtic Park. Reaper would suffer a career-ending injury early on in the next season, and Stubbs would never again be a permanent fixture in the starting eleven. Of course, a large reason for this was also due to medical issues. The scout centre half was diagnosed with testicular cancer in May 1999, but would thankfully make a full recovery and return to first team action within just a few months. He would even play the full 90 minutes in Celtic's famous 6-2 derby win over Rangers in August 2000. The cancer came back a second time later that year, but Stubbs would yet again make a full recovery, returning to the field in a May 2001 victory over Hibs. He would join Everton that summer, the club he supported as a boy, and left as a fan favourite for the bravery and courage he showed throughout battling his medical issues. In total, Alan Stubbs made 145 appearances for Celtic, scoring 5 goals. Number 7, Al Berkovich. John Barnes was named as Celtic manager in June 1999, with Kenny Dalglish being made director of football. The club were spending big money at this point to try and regain the top spot in Scottish football and it took a fee of £5.75 million to bring Berkovic from West Ham to Celtic Park. This was a record fee for a Scottish club at the time, but Berkovic's spell at the club wouldn't be a happy one. The Israeli midfielder was a talented player, but throughout his career was accused of lacking commitment and effort. He showed impressive glimpses at Celtic, including scoring a double at Ibrox to put Celtic 2-1 up in what would ultimately be a 4-2 defeat, but he's forever associated with the dismal 99-2000 season under John Barnes. Hendrick's broken leg, the club's worst ever manager, losing 3-1 at home to Inverness. It was a rough year for the supporters, and though Berkovic could shine at times on the pitch, he would also direct vitriolic gestures at the fans in an April 4-2 win over Kilmarnock that made him less than popular. With a reputation of being a troublemaker hanging over his head and a strained relationship with the fans, Martin O'Neill would allow Berkovic to leave on loan to Blackburn after taking over as manager before a permanent transfer to Man City followed in 2001 for a £1.5 million fee. A disappointment for everyone, Berkovic is not remembered fondly by many. In total, he made 42 appearances, scoring 13 goals. Number 8, Chris Sutton. The English striker made his name as a youngster at Norwich before forming a lethal partnership with Alan Shearer that would fire Blackburn Rovers to the Premier League title in 1995. But he arrived at Celtic in July 2000 following a terrible spell at Chelsea and was in search of a career revival. The £6 million fee raised a few eyebrows but Sutton would go on to become a club legend during his six year stay. He formed a lethal partnership with Henrik Larsson up front with the duo developing an almost telepathic understanding of each other. Both scored a brace in the 6-2 win over Rangers, the game which revitalised the club to being the dominant force in Scotland once again. In his first season, Sutton scored 14 goals as the Celtic went on to win a domestic treble. He was perhaps Martin O'Neill's finest signing for Celtic, and would spend years bullying Rangers defences as the club would also make a mark on the European stage. As Berkovic is associated with unhappy times, Sutton is associated with the total opposite. He was a key figure in Celtic's turnaround and continues to be a beloved figure at Celtic Park since retirement as Scottish football's best pundit. Sutton made 199 appearances for Celtic, scoring 86 goals. He won four league titles, three Scottish Cups and a League Cup and scored European goals against the likes of Juventus, Lyon and sweetly against former club Blackburn after Graham Souness had dubbed the first leg men against boys. 
Sutton left in 2006 to join Birmingham City, having given Celtic the best years of his career and countless happy memories. Number 9. John Hartson For all the glow and praise I just gave Chris Sutton, much of the same can be said for John Hartson. The Welsh striker signed from Coventry City in August 2001 for a £6.5 million fee with all add-ons included. Though he looked much older, he was just 26 years old at the time and had impressive, if inconsistent, spells at Arsenal, Wimbledon and West Ham. The previous year, Hartson had all but signed for Rangers, going as far as to arrive at Ibrox ready to take photos with a Rangers scarf held over his head. But a failed medical would be a loss that would haunt Rangers for years. Martin O'Neill waived the medical Hartson was sure to fail and was another crucial sign in during O'Neill's five year spell as manager. His time at the club started poorly in the early months but Hartson would go on to score 109 goals in 201 appearances overall. All at once Celtic had Henrik Larsson, Chris Sutton and John Hartson vying for the two starting positions up front, an embarrassment of riches that seemed all too unlikely during the dark days of Tony Cascarino. Due to Sutton's versatility and in truth Hartson's complete lack of versatility, Sutton would often be deployed in midfield or even at centre back to accommodate Hartson up front. The Welshman, even in his prime, lacked pace and mobility but was a superb finisher with an excellent touch and unbeatable at times in the air. He was excellent for O'Neill and even for Gordon Strachan in the 0506 campaign. Hartson left to join West Brom in 2006 and is remembered as a fan favourite to this day, even if his punditry is every bit as bad as Sutton's is good. And number 10, Odson Edward. Yes, it may be hard to believe, but under the tight-fisted rule of Peter Law, Celtic have broken their own transfer record only once in the last 23 years. That was for French prodigy Odson Edward, who arrived on a permanent transfer from PSG in the summer of 2018 for £9 million. Edward had spent the previous season on loan at Celtic and impressed manager Brendan Rodgers enough to make the deal permanent. Just 20 years old at the time, Edward showed all the potential in the world. At first second fiddle to fellow Frenchman Moussa Dembele, Edward would become the main man up front following Dembele's departure to Lyon. Tall, fast, strong, with good touch and vision, Edward was one of the most well-rounded strikers Celtic had seen in years. Perhaps unfairly, Edward was at times accused of being lazy on the pitch and had a reluctance to release the ball that would see him lose possession. But at his best, Edward was one of the finest forwards witnessed at Celtic Park. It's a shame things ended badly with the Covid season, but in his prime he was a joy to watch. Edward made 196 appearances for the club, scoring 89 goals before departing to Crystal Palace in August 2021 for a fee of around £14 million. Interestingly, that makes Edward the only player on this list to have made a profit for Celtic. He won three titles in his four years at the club, and though he spits opinion with some, in reality he was a top quality player for Celtic who doesn't deserve the criticism he sometimes receives. Thanks for watching the video. Credit given to the Celtic Wiki for the transfer information and make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments.